So today we're going to talk about being positive in the midst of challenge or negativity. This is Jeanette Ipapotwason and this is Chick Driven Chats and we're here to give you your best life in bullet points. So today's episode, where our guest, she won the 2013 Miss International title. She is an actress, a model, and an inspiration. Joining us today from Toronto is beauty and positivity queen, Bea Rose Santiago. Hey, Bay. Hi, guys. Good evening. Good morning to me. <laughs> Good morning to you. How long nice time no see. <laughs> I know, like, two years, three years. Yeah, so I think the last time we did an event together before we we Bay and I actually met. We traveled together in Japan to Japan, and wow. then she showed me a lot of uh, no, good times there. You know, <laughs> I remember you know rushing, buying burger because we were too, so late because we were shopping, and then we had an event. Like to bat ako kami pa balik ng hotel. <laughs> Buti na lang our hotel is so close to everything. It was in downtown. Yes. Right? Yes, it was in downtown. That was a really nice hotel, though. Great experience. So, Bay, I'm going to start from the very, very beginning. Share with us your journey. First, first, first and foremost, tell me what's happening to you there in Canada, in Toronto. Well, um, I was actually diagnosed with IJ nephropathy, it's an autoimmune disease, um, when I was 16 years old, 17, around that time. And then um, I was stage one then, and then um, I guess it kind of disappeared. But then I didn't know that once you're diagnosed with that autoimmune, it's forever. Um, but okay. I took care of my body for um, and, until uh, my kidney failed uh, in 2018, around August. Um, but before that, um, I was doing a lot of things and I had no idea that stress and, you know, um, lack of sleep and thereof, that is kind of like uh, part of my lifestyle with my work kind of mm -hmm. was. Um, and on top of that, I also had some food poisoning and dengue. So little things like that, that for a normal yeah. person hurt my, my, my kidneys really badly and that caused uh, kidney failure at the age of 28. So okay. I've been di dialyzing since I was 28 around September and mm -hmm. I, I have I actually have my dialysis in my room so I do it myself but I had to go through, I had to go through um, I sit in I sit in um, I had to go through hospital every day for three and a half months just to train for it and how to properly care for myself if I am alone mm -hmm. with my home hemodialysis okay so you said you were diagnosed in si at 16 mm -hmm. and then you went on and joined the pageant how did that affect you tell us about how it affect your 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 disease or what, whatever you were diagnosed with did it affect your journey as becoming miss international actually kind of like for me kind of helped because with the diet i stick mm -hmm. to all since i was 17 i was i started eating healthy right away and you know and um doing it right i guess so exercising and and all and i lost a good amount of weight but it it wasn't like the baby fats, kumbaga, like, oh, hi. you know, like, and I stopped eating, you know, really bad food, which is like most Filipino food. Yeah. <laughs> so we would like replace, you know, like soy sauce to like lesser, um, not in, as intense. So our household became a little bit of um, healthier version of all the Filipino food, which I loved. And I think it helped me um, with my journey because mm -hmm. I really love food. So um, when it comes to that, I was just very strict with everything in my regimen when it comes to being healthy. And then mm -hmm. also, I know that the stress is also um, part of the autoimmune um, problem. So as a, at a young age of 17, I tried not to stress myself with things. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that came in handy when it comes to um, my journey in Binibini and in Miss International because it was intense, a lot of stress and stuff. So... I had to really reflect and think deeper whenever I'm thinking negatively that, that I have to switch it because you, it's going to affect your kidney or and, and my overall health. Exactly. So okay. 
that helped me with that. Did you ever see yourself during the during the pageant or during the competition that you know I was re- you were really having a hard time because of your uh, because of your situation and how did you overcome it? I didn't really had a hard time. I was living my life. I was just doing everything um, because in my head, if I fail, I have somewhere to go to. Anyways, <laughs> I'll go mm-hmm. back to Canada, but that time i wanted to live it up and 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 push 100% of how much i can do and i was just very fortunate and lucky that i ended up winning bini bini and then miss international even with a very little um experience in in the pageant industry okay so you won bini bini filipinas you won Miss International. I just learned that you actually won Miss International during the Typhoon Yolanda. Yeah. And then how, how did that how did that make you feel? Um, it was very memorable and inspiring actually. Um be, uh, days before my pageant, I think it was around November. My pageant is around December. That's when Yolanda um destroyed um Tacloban and yes and a group of girls me Miss Universe Ariella Arida um I and um Pia actually the three of us we wanted to help we wanted to you know really really be active when it comes to helping out but during that time Tacloban was close to um to us we weren't allowed to okay. go so we asked if we can go anywhere that's needed and Roja City, which was also um, affected, but there was no mm-hmm. casualties. Um, we went, but I, we thought it would be like, you know, like just storm and, and stuff. But when we were there, it was, we could tell it was so, we could feel like it was in the atmosphere. It was in the, the vibe was wrong. The vibe was sad. It was dry. It was dark. It was so gloomy. There was no green anywhere. All the trees mm-hmm. were like, just trees with branches like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we could really, really feel um with this strong sadness. Yes. Yeah. And um we had to like go around the um big wires or we have to be like, oops, don't go there because it's wet and there's yeah. like wire. <laughs> oh nga, mama, and, electric <laughs> yeah, and we went to uh, the municipality which you could tell the layers of um uh, the mud coming in the building okay. there's layers of layers until we get to the third floor and that's when everything changed it mm-hmm. was a scene it was like a scene of an fbi where you know those on um on tv where everyone's in their laptop and everything was yeah it, there were unf you un there were military canadian military they were american militaries there were just different groups of people trying to help filipinos and right when yeah. i saw that I almost I cried actually. I almost wanted to say sorry to them, thank you to them, and say sorry because I was there with my beautiful makeup and my sash. Yeah, and yeah. I, said, I feel embarrassed because I feel like I'm not doing enough. Yeah, to okay. how they're doing. Like we okay. even had to stop them, be like, "Hi guys, we're here," because they did it. They were so focused on their jobs, on mm-hmm. on helping us that um, they didn't notice us. So it was, they were that amazing and that really, really inspired me to say mm-hmm. thank you. And um, so I made sure that my speech was written by me because usually yeah. the Filipinas touch that oh, right for you. They kind of like hold on to your thoughts, you know, and, and, and whatever you want to say. But during that time, I was very secretive. <laughs> I gathered all of my mentors, which are mostly from Bini Bini Filipinas anyway. So they trusted the process. They trusted that um, whatever or whoever I invited in that room will give, um, you know, um, they will give the power to inspire, I guess. And that's what really happened. Um, The speech was a thank you to everybody who helped uh, during that time. Okay. So... If there was something that you learned during your pageant days, what was it? What was your pinaka key learning during your pageant days? Honestly, I was I was just lucky that 
I was just surrounded by good, good people, good, positive people that my whole, my whole journey, even though it was stressful, I was comforted with the fact that nobody wants me down. Everybody wants to see me up. And although, you know, on my personal level, there were some family members and um, that were kind of hesitant. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the pageant industry, my friends that I met, uh, my mentors that I met in there, they were just so positive. And, and so I think that was the inspiration of why I've always been positive in, in mm-hmm. anything that I do, even af- even while hosting or um, trying to become artista. I was just trying to be positive because that's how I was taught during Bini Bini, during Miss International, because everyone was just so positive and, and light. And I didn't feel competition. I'm like, I, I was crying actually during my Miss International because I didn't feel the competition because they were so nice. So- Hindi, wala bang nagsasabunutan? Wala bang nag- no, it's just opposite. I guess that's a Miss oh. Universe stories. Yeah. But national, we were all so nice and cute and sweet. And in a matter of fact, my first runner-up and second runner-up were my roommates. My neighbor, oh, okay. my first runner-up, which was my best friend during the pageant. So it was weird to see us in a in a trio, but okay. we're, we're like the best friends. So... I was just very fortunate that my stories and my experience as a beauty queen was full of um, beautiful stories, beautiful memories. So I guess okay. that I reflected in and 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 you know like hardships that I overcame. Okay, or so now you, I took overcome. Yeah. So now we're gonna talk about your health challenges. So you were diagnosed, your kidney failed in 2018, right? Yes. So how did it start? How did you know about it? Um, it was weird because a month before Janet, I actually prayed because I had a, I had like a, I don't know, it was like a quarter life question. I don't know, but I started praying really hard and I asked like, oh God, is this, is this what you wanted for me? Is this, is this, cause I was um, wondering what's deeper than, you know, being a host, being an artista, like what mm-hmm. else can I do? And, and I asked, I asked God that. Um, give me another door <laughs> to open. Another door. <laughs> and after a month, I started having really bad headaches mm-hmm. to the point where it's like it was once a week. And then it mm-hmm. became twice a week. And then it almost did happen. Uh, it was almost like an every day. And then for three days straight, I was just in my room crying because my head was pounding. Mm-hmm. And um, at that day, I couldn't eat anymore. I couldn't focus anymore. I was just crying and I felt dehydrated and dizzy because I was, I was vomiting everything that I was eating and drinking. So I thought, this is not normal. Something is wrong. I need to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, we attended um, my friends. Um, remember Cherry? We attended... Um, um, yeah, Cherry. Yeah, oh. yeah, we attended um, her son's... Um, I think it was an anniversary, death anniversary. So we went, and then right after there, fresh from the cemetery, we went to uh, the uh, St. Luke's um, emergency. And then I thought I was, I, I thought I was suffering from aneurysm because it was, you know, I was having headaches. Yeah, really, really bad. And then they said, no, um, something's wrong with your creatinine. We need to do more. You have to stay. And they stayed for two weeks, and we couldn't figure out what's wrong with me until we had to do a biopsy. And oh, that's okay. the doctor, I think I was there for almost two, three weeks. The doctor was saying, um, you have kidney failure. You have 15% um, working kidney capacity right now. And that I need, a, uh, I need a transplant. Where are your possible donors? And I, my head started like, what? What's happening? I don't understand. <laughs> and then, because I was perfectly normal. I have nothing... I have no yeah. problem aside from my headache, which disappeared when I was in the hospital. And um, what? And then, and then I said I was in denial. I had, um, you know, I was recommended to go to Tokyo to see and and get fixed and see if there's something we can do through technology. But then yeah. when I went there, it came as a confirmation. But still, I wasn't a hundred percent. And so I went to Canada to be with my family. You know, and and to, just to see if this is fixable. 
<laughs> because okay. I really believe nothing was wrong with me. But at that time, I was getting slower and slower and getting tired easily. And so, and that, I think I almost fainted at one point because it was summertime in Canada. And okay. um, we went to the, uh, the doctors, which is in Toronto General Hospital, downtown of Toronto. And that's where I was admitted. And I didn't, I didn't go home until I think two weeks after, but I already have my, my CVC or my catheter because I need to dialyze. And right away I felt, I felt better. So I knew okay. they were right. <laughs> okay. You didn't go through transplant yet, right? No, not yet. I'm waiting. So you're still waiting, but you know, what, what have you been doing? Cause you know, you had a career here in the Philippines, you were hosting, you were, you were a celebrity. How did that tran uh, that transition work for you? How did it happen? Besides, well, you know, just going yeah. to Canada because you got sick. Yeah, it was really, really hard because since I was 17, I've been working um, intensely, not, not like as a part-time, more of full-time. And I was used to being busy and going places and always doing something. So... It was it was kind of a, a slap in the face, like come down, relax. That was the hardest mm -hmm. for me, and um, it was a very like heavy like situation where you're put in one box and then you're you're put in another box. I really had to go through a lot of um, self reflection and just realizing that I need to focus more on myself now and not mm -hmm. on because I was really really eager to. Um, mm -hmm have a better future I guess I don't know it, it was uh -huh. like late 20s kind of thing where you want to be like go 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 because I want the world is your oyster I want everything done by 30 because I want to have children are after like 35 years old and so um that didn't happen my plans didn't work out but it made me slow down. It made me take a step back and sit down and focus on myself. And 2019 was really hard for me mental health wise that I actually asked for help. And I said, I need therapy because this is intense. Um, before Life everybody, yeah. yeah, before everybody had, you know, um, before every, before COVID where you have nowhere else to go, but your thoughts, I had to go through that. And I, I did that in 2019. So I was just very lucky that um, there were people that really were supportive and loving and caring and really helped me with the journey of self-reflection. So what keeps you busy nowadays? Busy nowadays? Um, I used to work for fashion. I used to be a buyer and seller. <laughs> And then when pandemic happened, um, unfortunately, my agency closed. And so was all okay. of my brands. Um, and so what now I'm actually helping my friend um, who organizes events and weddings. And, okay. and, and you know, I also um, help as, uh, what do you call this, wedding coordinator because mm -hmm. I am talkative. Okay. <laughs> also... Um, and also, I host, if I can, for the Fil most Filipino weddings. And mo we have pageants here, too, which my mom is very active in. So I also do a lot of hosting for them. Okay. So no plans to go back here to the Philippines? Not yet. Maybe next year when everybody is vaccinated. <laughs> yes, that's all right. But, you know, through these challenges, everything that you have gone through, what, what, what did you learn, Aman? What was your key learning? When you got sick, is it just, you know, you stop and taking care of yourself? You said you had a bout of, you know, issues with mental health. After all this was said and done, what is it that you held on as like a belief to keep you going? Um, I don't know. It, 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 in, in different situations that I went, uh, I went through, I've been through or still going through, uh, there's always one thing that always keeps in my mind that no matter how much I stress about it, what God put in my plate is what I have to go through. So no matter how much you stress, mm -hmm. you, really, you really can't change anything because the path already been made for you. You just have to be patient and support and, 
and just focus and um, really just just chill and enjoy the ride. Chill. Exactly. Chill. Because no matter how much you stress, it's not going to stop the world from crumbling down. It's not going to stop mm -hmm. anything. So might as well ref sit down, see what's on your plate, and then realize that there's always a reason why it's happening. Maybe it's to teach you something. Maybe it's to teach people around you. Maybe it's to make you tougher. Maybe it's to make to make you realize something. I always see it that way because whenever I reflect, I say, oh my God, yeah, I get it now. Why is it like this? Oh yeah, it was like this. It started because of Janet when I was in Bini Bini and I had an unfortunate experience with a 20 peso bill. Um, there was an, an accident that I don't want to elaborate, but there was a 20 peso bill that kind of was used to make fun of me. Um, and it just so happened, my Bini Bini number, my winning number is 20. Okay. And I said, oh my God, that's not a coincidence. It was a sign. Mm -hmm. You know, first you have to struggle something and then you will see that that same number or that same person or that, that whatever it is. Same thing, yeah. thing that will also bring you to the light. Yeah. So, so I, I firmly believe that the, de the destiny is already up there. You know, yeah. you, you, can, you, can, you can go around it, but your ending is still at that. So that's okay. what happened. And that's why I'm always, I'm, I'm you know, in, in a positive light. I mean, to be honest, I, I'm not in, sometimes I'm in bad condition. Like I feel bad for myself, you know, I feel sad. Mm -hmm. But I never to the point where just like what um, um, Tito Boy said, like, when are you, when is it not okay? It's not okay yeah. when you're hurting yourself and the people around you. You really have to wake up and say, I have to help myself. Get up and help yourself. Because first of all, no one's going to help you other than you. Nobody knows you better than you. And um, whatever it is going in your head, it's just there release it, take it out because you're your number one enemy. And, and that really, really helped me that type of thinking, the way mm -hmm. I um, try to communicate with myself is what helped me whenever I okay. feel. That's a great, that's a great learning. But so let's say, for example, you were given a chance to tell one thing or one, you know, you were given a chance to go back in time and tell your young self, the one you were 18 or 19 when you were doing Binibining Pilipinas, if there's something that you can tell your young self, what will it be? Um, the quote that I, I use for Binibini, which is, if you want light in your life, stand where it is standing, stand where it is um, shining. So, you know, I just just focus on positivity, positivity. Whatever it is positive, stand there, and then the light will just guide you. Okay. Yeah. So let's say, for example, diba, you said you mentioned that there are times that you were having a bad day. Diba? Everybody has a bad day. Yes. What, what, what is it that brings you to the light? Um, is there like a process or like a, oh, yeah, is there like I, a habit that you do? I let myself feel all sorts of emotions. I let myself cry. Um, I firmly believe that crying helps. So I cry if I have to cry. I cry. I let myself experience things. But I pick myself up. I cannot dwell on that. I cannot be in that dark room all the time because it will. It, you will get sucked in. And what are you going to do if you're sucked in? Like, you know, it's not, it's not going to be good for you or and the people around you. And so I just try to really focus on, on good and positivity and see what happens. Uh, positive things have happened in my life. I mean, I've been saved so many times. I am, I'm, I'm so fortunate that I am Canadian. Um, I'm so loved by my family and my friends. I have real genuine relationships with everyone that I've met. So I've, I, I think I was prepared for this. That's what I believe. I was prepared for this. And whenever I think about that, I have to self-reflect that there's, worst things that could happen. I could have, I could have lost something. I could have had a heart attack and, yeah. and had a stroke or something like that. Because uh, my disease, this kind of autoimmune disease actually is, is uh, very secretive. You don't know you're sick until you're very sick. 
and sometimes oh, it's too okay. late. But I found out earlier, and that's why my heart and my other organs are so very, very strong. Mm, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to give you a series of questions. Just, you know, answer it on the first thing that pops into your head. So let's say, for example, what is something that you really miss in the Philippines? My dogs and food okay. and the beach. <laughs> oh my God. You have no idea um, how much I want to swim in, in, in the ocean, in the beach, because I can't swim because, you know, and I miss it. I can only I can only do half body, but I can't really like swim under okay. water. Okay. So the next question is what is your energy vampire? Ooh, my energy vampire? Yes. That probably my dog. I have a new puppy now. <laughs> <laughs> when I look at my puppy, I'm like, oh, I love you. And I'm energy. I'm energized. You're energized. No, I mean the, the energy vampire. What takes away your energy? So if you're puppies, I know you. Oh. I know you breed dogs. I know you breed dogs, and you were telling me about it, about the Pomeranians and stuff. And I got one. So what is your your dogs energize you? What removes your energy? Oh my God, dialysis. Dialysis is intense, man. It's like I I ran a marathon. It's, it really drains your energy, even without you even thinking or doing some something. Going through dialysis really sucks your energy. Okay. Most memorable book most most memorable book you read. Who Joel Austin's um I forgot, but I have one of the one of those three self help books, the very first three books. I forgot the name, but um, yes, something yes, something like that. I forgot. Okay. Joel Austin's been helping me. Uh, are you watching K drama or are you watching Western drama? <laughs> Western drama. <laughs> I, I did. I did. I had a moment in my life. I dated a Korean guy. I mean, oh. you can just say, oh, 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 I, oh, I'm oh. Korean. I dated one. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think when I'm, I, I, when I was around 20s, early 20s, um, I was really intense as well. Um, nobody, nobody but you. I sang that to my boyfriend. <laughs> 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 intense yeah i was i was a k-drama lover before k-drama lover before okay last movie you watch on netflix or on the computer or something oh my god um i re-watched 365 days <laughs> <laughs> don't judge, don't judge. Uh, yeah no judgment i haven't yeah. actually watched it yet because i'm stuck oh in god. the k-drama thing yeah it's a little intense so um it's a big jump from K drama. <laughs> it's a big jump from K drama. Thank you so much, Bay, for sharing us your Thank time. You. My God, I so wish much. I could see you soon. Next uh, year, hopefully. Next year, yes. So, if there's some message you want to tell the our you know, our viewers from the Philippines and everywhere else, mm -hmm. what are the three things you want to give them as an advice? Advice: Take care of yourself, eat healthily, exercise, sleep well, and pray. As much as you can second probably um don't get bitter be better oh i like that i like right that. i super like that don't get bitter be better and um third is be happy be genuinely happy do whatever it is that makes you happy because everything will just work out and yeah. I, um and i'm experiencing happiness because summer is here and i'm so happy <laughs> Summer's not so summer there, you know. It's, it's, it's summer here. You know, we have like what two, three months of summer, so I'm gonna make the best out of it. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, good luck. <laughs> I know the summer there's not so warm, you know. Well it's it's better than you know, I mean I was we were all cooked up in our own houses for like a year and a half. We couldn't even go out. We were only allowed to um buy um online or go through you know um pick it up and just like literally i was in my sweats i was looking at my clothes early and i said oh my god i have nothing else but <laughs> from <Slugger. buying." laughs> from yeah i was always in sweater pants and 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 just just comfortable clothing and I'm okay. happy. I'm happy that you've invited me. That I I put on my lashes. <laughs> <laughs> I put on my lashes. Is there something bad that you want to tell the viewers? What you're busy with? You want to promote something? Where they can find you? 
Well, they can always find me, and um, I show a little bit of my journey in my Instagram, Bea.Santiago. And I have a few videos on YouTube as well under Bea Rose um, YouTube name. And um, other than that, maybe the, we can just wait and see when my transplant's gonna happen, but soon it's gonna happen. I'm just waiting for the day. But yeah, I'm just pray for me that my transplant will come and pray that the world will hear heal from what we're going through right now. Thank you, thank you, Bea. Thank you for sharing and thank you for waking up early for this. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I remember Bea was part of our Chic Driven Women Empowerment Expo. Yeah, she walked as an empowered woman. Thank I you, thank you. There. I love I still wear the flat shoes that you guys gave me. <laughs> yeah, the butterfly down, twist. But yeah. I love <laughs> butterfly twist one. Yes, that, that's that's really a keeper. Super, super comfortable in. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank hey, you. Ladies and gentlemen, nice that's it. You. We'll get, we're going to make Bea go back to sleep because <laughs> <laughs> we woke her up so early. Bea, thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. And I hope that um, we can invite you once again to just share your positivity. You're really a positivity queen. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mwah, mwah. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> okay, that's another informative and inspiring episode. And of course, Chic Driven Chats always on Thursdays, 5.30 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Please don't forget to subscribe so you, if you know, so you would know if we have new content. You can also catch some of my written works in Philippine Daily Inquirer, onemega.com, and of course, Lifestyle Asia. If you have any suggestions for topics or guesting or anything that you want to learn, please don't, don't be shy to DM us, either on the Facebook page or on Instagram. I hope you learned a lot of things today, a lot of positivity. This has been Jeanette Ipaputwason, and we're here to give you your best life in bullet points. <laughs>